I scheduled this for, let me do this here, this may be better. Okay, I think that's a little better. I scheduled this for 7-Eleven, but when I got ready to get on, my computer was frozen. And so here we are. I, guys, I am, I realized this this morning, I'm on the last day of my productive rest month. And for those of you who may be new around here, first of all, hey, hi, and hello. Um, introduce yourself, let me know who you are, how you serve, um, what you do in the marketplace, what type of business do you own? Um, I'll do a quick introduction in a moment, but for those of you who are new around here, my productive rest months are months where I don't do any coaching. So I have two months out of the 12 month time frame that I don't do that area of work in my business. And I'm so glad, this is something I decided when I first brought my coaching and consulting business online. <clears throat> I'm so glad that I did because the more I continue on, the more valuable these productive rest months are. There are times for me to reflect, take a look at my business, um, I picked July, number one, because it's my daughter's birthday month. She turned 18 this month, and I realized I hadn't been on live since before her birthday slash send-off to college party. So it's been a, a couple of weeks, but number one, it's that month. It's a slower month. I can travel, do things with my daughter because she's out of school. So I kind of chose it around that. And also, it's like the midway point of the year. So it's a great time for me to do a business assessment of my own business. Um, I'm always doing that for other people. And it's so important that, you know, I take time to reflect and look at my own business as well. I use my framework that I use for you guys when I'm doing VIPs with you all. I, I go through my business because I realize that there are things that we do over time that really work in our business. And if we aren't mindful of those things, they won't become a system or a pattern or something that we continuously do. So maybe it's something we found from inspiration. Um, and also it's a time for me to declutter and simplify. If you follow me for any number of time, you know that simplification, um, uh, less is actually more over here. It's about focusing on your zone of genius, your superpower and things that really move you forward and eliminating you know the stuff that is just busy work right and so I've had an amazing time in my productive rest month and I felt like coming on early this morning and I said well you know if I had to have a topic to share with you all that has been generated from my productive rest month what would it be and I chose mastering life and business, mastering life and business. And specific, specifically because my work with um, women who own businesses is centered around helping them to achieve their higher level goals. And in that space of helping them to achieve, I'm also aware of the things that cause them to be stuck in cycles or patterns and things where they feel like they can't move forward. And when we have learned to master life and business, we, when we have learned you know, some specific things about what is required to do that, all of that stuff just, it's, it's more smooth, right? The process is most um, the most smooth. So one of the things I realized is that some of the lowest times that you have in life can become your most defining moments. Now, if you agree, put me in the comments. Some of your lowest times in your life and in your business can become your most defining, your most important moments if you allow it to be, right? And so a, a few ways it can go. So those lowest times in life can be a space of ascension where you really kind of like pull the arrow back and shoot really, really far in your business and life or um, quantum leap, if, if you like. Or it can become a space of decline. And unfortunately for many people, some of those lower points in their business especially 
become a place of decline for them. So it's a place where they, you know, ruminate in the thoughts of what didn't go well, what isn't going as expected. They become complacent, stagnant. Um, if they were shooting for higher goals and ideals in their business and life, they will plummet back down to doing things the way they have before. And then there are others who those low points become a place of ascension. So as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about my own life and some very transitional times in my life when I opened my brick and mortar service-based business, got married and had my daughter within a three year time frame. That season, that space was a defining moment for me. It was actually a moment of overwhelm. Those were all great things that were happening, but it was so much happening at one time. It required me to take a step back kind of like what i'm doing in my productive rest time and really assess like what's transpiring making sure i'm still in alignment with the vision that i have and what are the things that i'm going to need to do to move forward that space and time was so defining because number one i created so many of my programs from that defining moment in my life where i learned different actions and ways of being to get unstuck and to ascend onto my next level. My divorce, I was married for 14 years. It was a defining moment in my life where I had this big decision. Like I could stay in the place and the home, the marriage home, or I could move completely, start over fresh. I chose to start over fresh. I have this innate belief that all things are working good for my good. and. Oftentimes, I realize <clears throat> that those defining moments are an opportunity to really do something great and amazing that my comfort zone, my normal routine, my normal everyday life didn't necessarily present those opportunities. And so if you find yourself in a defining moment in your business or in your life, the way you look at it, the way you perceive it is going to determine how you come out of it. One of the biggest things that you need to do is figure out what you want. You want to master life? You need to figure out what you want. Now, there are so many external things that are telling us what to do, what to desire, what it should look like, all the things. But I say go within and figure out what it is that you want. And then you have to shut the door. Listen, you have to shut the door on everything that's not in alignment with you. You got to shut the door on it. This is going to give you a completely different focus as it relates to what it is that you desire. So many people say they want something different, but when opportunity presents itself, there's so many fears and limiting beliefs that are running the show. It doesn't allow them to actually embody what it is that they are saying they desire. So the first thing, everything that I'm talking about is actually you coming from a space of self mastery. Mastering life and business is about self mastery, right? Understanding what is on the inside of you, how you think, what you believe, how you're moving, different patterns in your life. It is about self mastery. Most people are having an identity crisis, right? because they're operating other than themselves because everything that they're getting is coming from the outside of them. So we all know that we were created in a world space where, you know, scripture says man is not good for man to be alone. So it's not intended for us to do this thing by ourselves. There are other people and um, opportunities and places. There are external things that help us along our journey. But the key is if you have not gone within to understand who you are, you won't know when those things come before you. You won't know what is the right thing to choose. I always talk about vision because vision is the thing that gives you clarity on the destination, right? When you understand who you are, then you also get to determine what your destination is going to be. What does my life and my business need to look like based on who I am, right? Based on what I'm called to do in this world space. Now, what is really transpiring when you're tapping back in, 
when you're having either productive rest moments, weeks, months, whatever you want to call it, it's you tapping back in. And what happens when most people tap back in is then they go through the space of resistance. And what they're really doing is resisting evolution. Now, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm learning that so I talk about scaling. This is a good time to introduce myself. I'm a master life and business coach, Tanya Wilson, master life and business coach. And I help women step into their personal power, scale their businesses to six and multiple six figures and create the lifestyle that they love. And what I find is when most people are tapping you know, maybe they've gone through a transitional time, uh, a low space, and there is some resistance. Again, I say they are only resisting evolution. When you resist what you need to do next, you're resisting, you know, your growth. You're resisting the ability, the opportunity, that's a great word, to evolve. You're resisting an opportunity to evolve. So, what you must understand is that there are divine laws that are operating all the time whether you know it or not and you are either working in alignment with those laws so that they're assisting your ascension and your evolution or you're violating the laws unknowingly that are causing you to stay in those lower spaces at lower vibrations and so understanding the laws that are at hand are, are super important. I actually teach uh, those laws inside my She Prospers 30 Day Mastermind. That is definitely a space for learning to master your business and your life, whatever stage you're, you're at. But learning the laws by which things are happening on this earth space are important. So. I was going to make a post the other day and I, I decided not to, but I think this is a good time to talk about it. I didn't think that words on the page, or I had the words on the page, to effectively communicate it in writing, but I think I can do that here. So one huge thing that has been important to me and something that I've had to work on and I continue to work on over and over and over again. It's just that I don't have to spend as much time working on it because I've evolved in that particular area. But so I've had circumstances and situations where I've been done unfairly or treated poorly or bad or whatever the case may be. And what I used to think, this is what I used to think. I used to think that I would be making righteous moves if I didn't say anything right and I just let it pass by I did a lot of that um, in the past but what was important for me to learn was although I wasn't speaking things out loud I was still saying things internally and that creates an energy and we are attracting circumstances situations opportunities in our life based on our energy which is what's going on internally so that's inner work that we have to do for that it's not just what we're speaking but it's when our words our thoughts and our actions are in alignment because we're really attracting from the space that we are an energetic match so what i learned was it it was just as important what i was saying out loud was no less important than what I was saying on the inside. So maybe someone offends you and you turn the other cheek. But what are you saying internally? There's scripture that talks about um, where Jesus kind of breaks down that we make offenses not just by doing them, but by what's transpiring in our heart space as well. And so all of this puts you on a different vibration or a different energetic match where you attract things into your life and into your business from that particular space because there are divine laws that are operating all the time like whether we're ignorant of the laws or not they're operating and whether we're violating the laws or not is based on whether we really really even understand what's transpiring in the world space around us these are natural laws that are just happening 
And so it's important that we begin to have power over our thoughts and our feelings. Power over our thoughts and our feelings. Now this isn't something that just happens overnight. It's a repetitive thing that you practice, that you become aware of. These are the things that help you to master life. And so one practice that you know I've gotten so much better at is being able to bless and release. And that doesn't mean me just not saying anything to the person because I believe that there are times and spaces where you do need to speak up for yourself, but it's the energy, the feeling that you have behind it that makes the biggest difference. It's, that's the vibration that you're actually on regardless of what you're saying, right? It's, it's all internal. So all of this um, is about you mastering life and business, having power over your thoughts and emotions. For instance, when I thought about the fact that I desired to come on, I had to step into a space of awareness and say, you need to do this early, early in the morning, because my routine is I'm doing my affirmations, I'm um, you know, praying, and, and I get up really early. And then midday, I, I'm ready for some rest and a nap, and I didn't want something that I felt was so important, which was to, to share this message with you, to be something that I did from a different space of energy because I had gotten tired. So this is about, you know, self-mastery and, and understanding. Remember when we talked in the beginning, I talked about knowing who you are. And many of the things that you're wanting to do in your business and life have to be based on knowing who you are and what how you need to shift and move things around in your life so that you can do those things that are going to serve you to your highest. And most people continue to put those things off over and over again because they haven't identified who they are, what they really need. Some people need accountability. Some people need community. Some people need to understand what their flow is. Some people need a, a routine in their day, in their, in their life that makes them brilliant. All of these things are having power over your thoughts and, and your feelings. This is how you're going to master life. Now, your thoughts and your feelings begin to create beliefs in your life. Now, if, you've on, if you're on this page, you've heard me talk about belief for I don't know how many years. It's, it's been a central standpoint of what I do. I actually function from a three-point perspective when I'm helping my clients, and that's helping them tap into an abundant mindset helping them in the area of personal growth and development and business building. So I work from that full circle um, perspective. So mindset is not some a new conversation for me to have with you. But this morning, I want you to know that your mindset determines how you see the world. It determines your perspective. And oftentimes, it's based on your experiences. And you have to be willing to go beyond what you've previously experienced to tap into a new realm when you want to master a new area of your life. You have to step into your God consciousness, right? So we do some God talk over here where we talk about big goals. We serve a big God. We talk about big ideas, big moves that we make in life. You have to tap into your God consciousness and understand that there is power and ability on the inside of you for most of the things that you fear doing in your business and your life. Remember, it's, it's from within. We build business from the inside out over here. We go within because that's where your personal power is. That's where your ability to master things in your business and your life is. It is within. And I teach my clients how to do that, how to lean in and tap into their personal power. And then I give them tools and strategies because if you guys haven't noticed, things are re recurring in life. And what matters most is how you handle what is transpiring. If the car breaking down, a new expense, um, you know, some type of transitional thing is the thing that's always going to hold you back, you will always be held back. Because those are things that are built into life. And we have to learn how to master and maneuver in spite of those things that are occurring. And if we tap into our God consciousness, we understand that we have the power to do those things. 
right? Now, sometimes you have to borrow someone else's belief. I'm here for that, right? Many of my clients, as they're calibrating to new levels in their life and their business, they borrow my belief. I hold the space for them to be able to do that, right? And so this is a reason why those things happen quicker, sooner, faster when we are in connection, when we are collaborating and co-creating together for what it is that they desire. So your mindset is determining the level of your God consciousness that you're operating on. Your mindset. Your mindset are things that you believe, whether you know it or not, you believe. So look at your current reality. You will understand what you're believing at this particular time. And this is a beautiful thing about when you are in a transitional space, you have an opportunity. Most oftentimes, it's one of your greatest opportunities to change what you previously believed. Because everything is on the table, right? It's a space where if you are in agreement, you can tap into an awareness that will show you what your current beliefs are which will allow you to see what beliefs you need to change in order for your life to be different, in order to ascend, in order to go to that next level. I remember reading a book so many years ago, and I sent my mom, I was in my 20s, I sent my mom this book as well. It's called um, Value in the Valley by Iyana Van Zant or Van Zant. And this is similar to those low points that you may feel in your life and your business because there's there's so much opportunity there's so much value in those spaces depending on your perspective depending on your mindset depending on your beliefs now if your mindset if you're operating your life from a mindset of scarcity and fear then you are going to attempt to set goals from a place of lack. And whenever you're attempting to do that, it means that you'll have this goal or this thing that you want to do, but because you're setting the goal from a place of lack, you will see impossibility as opposed to possibility. But when you step into the God conscious realm, right, because we serve, you know, a majestic God who created like this entire universe and everything in it I mean that's big it's also supernatural maybe this conversation is a little too much I'm gonna save the where I was about to go for the she prospers 30-day mastermind which is starting this Sunday I believe August the 5th is our first live coaching session the for pay option ended last night. Well, it was supposed to end at midnight, but I was asleep, so I have not changed that yet. So if you grab it before I change it, but the for pay option ends um, when I get off of this live. Join us. We're going to go in and talk about um, abundance and tapping into a new space of abundance. You'll spend um, 30 day time frame with me. We'll coach every single Sunday. Um, we'll have our live coaching sessions, but every single day you get activations, you get journal prompts, things that you do to create um, that new space of belief that's needed for your next level. If you understand, I have been functioning, I've been setting these goals from a place of scarcity, come get tapped in to your next level. Right, so that you can move forward in your business so that that space of uncertainty and stagnation isn't so long. You, you have to get tapped in to something that's going to allow you to operate at a, a different frequency. Now, when I talk about frequency, I especially want to talk about masculine and feminine energy. We deep dive on that in the She Prospers Mastermind as well. But masculine energy is from a space of doing. Feminine energy is a space of receiving. You need them both, right? Many of you need to really tap into your receiving mode 
in this particular space so that you can receive from a different level. What that would look like is if you go to raise your prices, but when you quote your prices, you say that they're lower than what they are or you never share because you're not in alignment. You haven't calibrated your energy and your space of belief to even believe that you deserve to receive at that level. When you when you tap into your feminine energy, you understand that it's not as much about your doing as a woman as it is about your being, as it is about your what you are receiving and allowing yourself to receive. And what's so important, we're still talking about mastering life here, is that you're protecting your energy. So many people think that they are protecting their energy, but the things that they watch online, the things that they listen to online, even though they feel it's just for entertainment, are on such a low vibrational space that it makes it impossible for them to become a vibrational match for the next level of abundance that they desire in their life. Listen, energy is huge. Guys, on my personal page, I am taking my time and removing people from my page, not because they're doing anything wrong, not because um, I don't like them, but because I realize it's not an energetic match for where I desire to go. And when I read some of their posts or see some of the things, I have to take the time to shift back into a higher vibration and a higher frequency. And so I don't want to spend all day doing that, right? I want to stay in that vibration so that I'm a match for those clients who are ready for what it is that I offer for the help that they need. All of it is, inner, is being an energetic match and vibrational energy for what it is that you desire. And most people don't know the difference in low vibrational activity and high vibrational activity. This is something else we also talk about and I teach on inside the She Prospers Mastermind because it's important. So many things people take for granted that they do say, be, have in their environment all day long that are really the culprits for them not getting to their next level. Mastering life, you have to protect your energy. So I taught this as a full circle. I'm going to go back and break down three points, three or four points to mastering your life and your business. Um, number one, self-mastery. Mastering your thoughts and your emotions is super important, right? Understanding, you know, how we are um, aligning with, you know, universal laws that are operating all the time, like even reaping and so on. So if I say something kind to someone and then I think something else, right I'm, I'm not in alignment and there's i mean we call it reaping and so on but it's the law of cause and effect there's a there's an effect it has to be for you know the energy that i'm putting out even though i'm holding it from the inside so um self mastery mastering power of your thoughts and your emotions um how you see the world changing your perspective about how you see the world will change how you move and have your being in the world this is also about seeing what's possible for you and and what you believe your perspective is going to determine how you get to experience the world your how you see it there are some things that other people see that may be wrong that i don't see i i just don't exist in that space that thought doesn't exist for me and as you continue to evolve and expand in the area of con of your consciousness and your mindset, some of the things that you used to complain about or trip about, you won't anymore because those things won't even exist in your world space, in your perspective. So your perspective is another thing. And then last but not least, your energy, right? Your energy, learning what's high vibrational, what, what's low vibrational. Um, understanding when to operate in your masculine energy and your feminine energy so that the things that you're wanting in your life work for your good right and remember 
most of the low spaces in life provide the best opportunities. Those are your most defining moments if you allow them to be. They can be an extreme measure of ascension and expansion if you allow it to be, if you can see the opportunity, if you can believe in the possibility of something so much greater, if you can believe that it is possible for you to create a future that's so much bigger than your past, right? It's an opportunity. Those times are an opportunity to tap in and grow to your next level. And see, that's perspective. We, we talked about that earlier, right? So based on your perspective, if that's how you want to see, see it, you will. And you will say, oh, this right here is a time for me to grab hold of that opportunity. And then whether or not you feel it's possible for you is, is going to be based on your belief. It's so important, and I shared this in the beginning, that you figure out what it is that you desire and shut the door on anything that's not in alignment. Shut the door on anything that's not in alignment. That's my take on this morning. Um, this is my um, like full circle expression of you know if i had to choose something to talk to you about that really came up for me during my product productive rest month it would be mastering life and business um, i would love for you uh, this is registering with you this feels like a nudge and what you need to join us for the she prospers 30-day mastermind i'll put the link to that in the comments we're tapping into abundance we're you know going over universal laws and principles and we're stepping into higher realms of belief um, doesn't matter what space you're in if you desire greater and more and you should it's okay to do that right um but you know you understand that i, I need to tap into another space of thinking and thought and possibility i need to become aware of some of the limiting beliefs that were happening at the last level that won't allow me access to the next level I invite you to join us. I'll put the link to that in the comments. You guys have a super blessed, um, amazing day. I wanted to do a few affirmations with you all. You know what? If you all have just a moment, I'm going to step away and grab my affirmation guide because it is something that I said I wanted to do. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I was doing my affirmations this morning and I said I was going to do a few affirmations with you all. Give me just a moment here. Um, now, the affirmations that I'm reading to you all are from my Police Your Thoughts um, affirmation guide. And so, yeah, I use my own work, <laughs> but I was, I, I went to two sections, so it, it's broken down into six um, parts. Well, it's really about eight, because I tell you um, the power and purpose of affirmations, and then um, I break it down into six life elements. And so I did affirmations in two areas this morning. So I did life element one, no specific order. Uh, which is mental and emotional um, life affirmations. So here are a few of them. Let's see what will be really good. Oh, this is really good. I am safe and all is well. Listen, when you understand that you're safe and all is well, it changes how you approach life. It really changes how you approach life. Um, Every good thing is within my reach. Every good thing is within my reach. Um, let me see. My life attracts great things. Oh, this one is really good. I think the best 
and am always prepared to shift my mind to thoughts of greater possibility. I think the best and I'm always prepared to shift my mind to greater possibility. And you, you're able to do that when you step into a space of awareness and you have the tools, you can shift your mind to an even greater possibility. So if a thought comes up that's coming from a space of lack, you know, when you're saying this particular affirmation, it reminds you that you can shift your mind to a greater space of possibility. Um, I give myself permission to reinvent myself. I give myself permission to reinvent myself. Um, oh, I release things that no longer serve who I am now and who I desire to become. Here's another good one. I create my reality through my thoughts. I always think in abundance. I create my reality with my thoughts. I always think in abundance. Okay, I'm going to go one more place. actually mark some ones to say for this one so this is this life element is career and finances affirmations for career and finances let's see money flows to me with ease money flows to me with ease my business flourishes and operates in abundance these are career and finance um, affirmations my business is organized and compliant. My business is organized and compliant. My business serves an exceptional purpose in my community, country, world, and people are blessed each time they are in contact with my business, its products, and its services. Here's another one. I have an amazing team helping me fulfill the vision and mission of my brand, business, or company that supports them in achieving their personal goals as well. Listen, these are career and finance affirmations. I have multiple revenue streams that are flourishing and producing a profit. Now, some people think that saying affirmations when those things are not evident in your right now seem fake or don't seem real, but what affirmations do is they recenter you. So let's say this last affirmation that I said. I have multiple revenue streams that are flourishing and producing a profit. If that is not actualized in your life at the time, it gives you a moment and space to assess that and say, okay, I, I have multiple streams, but they're not producing a profit. So it gives you a space of awareness. There's something else that I need to do. Right, so affirmations work in so many ways. It changes your thoughts and your actions. Your thoughts create your feelings, your feelings create your emotions, your emotions create your actions, and your actions create your results. So affirmations are super, super powerful. And here's this last affirmation I'll give you in the area of um, career and finance is I attract wealth. I attract wealth. There are tons of them, but um, those are two areas that I focused on this morning when I was doing my affirmations and I promised myself that I would read a few of those to you all so please um, give me a pass on the interruption that I took to go and get the affirmation guide because as I got, got ready to come on I didn't have that with me and I started to just let it pass but I was like nope that was what I felt inspired to do I hope that it blesses you um, for those of you who are looking for more ways to affirm the things that you're desiring in your life in a space where it becomes your reality, where you manifest and bring them into fruition, join us inside the She Prospers 30-Day Mastermind. Peace and abundance.